Ricky Stage 3, Level 6, and here we go with handling data. We should be able to show information on a pie chart. So here's some information to show on a pie chart. Number of people that bought particular newspapers. Now the first thing to do is to total up this column to see how many people in the survey. So that's 15, 18, 24, 30. And as a pie, we slice the pie into nice sections to eat. And we've got 360 degrees in a complete circle of a pie. We've got 30 people eating it. So if we do this calculation, we work out that 12 degrees per person. So in other words, we work out that 8 people will need 8 of these slices of 12 degrees. 7 will need 7. 3 will need 3 slices. 6. And if we work out each of these out, that's 96, 84, 36, 72, 72. And we add this up to check that that also adds up to 360 degrees. So we can now draw our pie chart because we know each angle for each section of the pie. When we draw the pie chart, label it with as much information as you can. In this case I'd write 96 degrees in there, I'd write the Guardian in there, and I'd write 8 people in there. Always label your pie chart with as much information as you can. We need to be able to show data using a scatter graph, to be able to draw a line of best fit, and to be able to interpret scatter graph. So here we go. The table shows information about ice cream sold. So there's the number of ice cream sold and the maximum temperature on that particular day. Ice cream sold, maximum temperature on that day. Complete the scatter graph. So the first one, two, three, four, five. Now we've continued to plot the rest of the points. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one is 182 on 29 degrees. So there's 29 degrees and there's 182 so that's just off the page there 157 ice cream sold when it was 24 degrees so there's 157 139 when it was 27 degrees 156 when it was 25 degrees 24 25 and the last point 167 which is there when it was 28 degrees. So that's plotting the rest of the points. Describe the relationship. Well you can describe it one of two ways. You could either say as it gets hotter you sell more ice creams or you can talk about it being a correlation. This is a positive correlation. A fairly strong positive correlation. Draw the line of best fit. The line of best fit is a straight line passing through maybe no points whatsoever so we need a ruler it certainly does not have to pass through that point there and we try and place the ruler so we've got just as many points either side of the line and it goes through some points so let's say my line of best fit is there for maths it's always a straight line of best fit then we could possibly ask to find some information estimate the following the number of ice creams sold when the maximum temperature is 23 degrees, so we find 23 degrees, we go up here, we go across, and we can say approximately 140 were sold. The maximum temperature is 159, so here we can go 159 is about there, go across, and we can go down and say what the temperature is. So that is being able to show data on a scatter graph, be able to draw the line of best fit, and read information. Now let's look at a frequency polygon, sometimes called a frequency diagram. Frequency polygon, frequency diagram, same thing. So we've got a table of information, four people scored between 0 and 10, seven people scored between 11 and 20, nine people scored between 21 and 30. Now what we talk about is the mid interval value. Midway between 0 and 10 is 5. 
Midway between 11 and 20 is 15. Midway between 21 and 30 is 25. They're called the mid-interval values. And in fact, those points that you plot when you do a frequency polygon, frequency diagram. So the 4 is plotted at the mid-interval value of 0 to 10. The 7 is plotted at the mid-interval value of 11 to 20. 7. The 9 is plotted at the mid-interval value of 21 to 30. 8, mid-interval value, 41 to 50, the mid-interval value is 45, that's the 5, and then the 2, and then this is joined up with a ruler with straight lines. This is called a frequency polygon or frequency diagram. Never join that up never go down there unless you're given some extra information which leads you to believe that that is the case. Stem and leaf diagrams. Stem and leaf diagrams are ways of showing information on a table. Here we've got numbers between 16 and 65. So we go right 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. These are the tens. And this is called the stem. So 35 means 3, 5. 42 means 42. 2, 3 means 23. 1, 6 means 1, 6, 16. 4, 0, 40. 3, 8, 3, 8. So we complete this. So this is where I've completed it. And to actually make it more useful... We rewrite it yet again with these numbers in order. So once we've done our stem and leaf diagram, with the numbers in order, we can use it to find the median, which we know is the middle value. Now there are actually 27 numbers here. So if we split that with 13, 1 and 13... That means to say the middle value is actually the 14th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's the 14th value, which means it's 43 is the median. The range is the lowest value, which is 16, taken away from the highest value, which is 68. So therefore, we can work out the range. So a stem and leaf diagram is often used to work out the median because we can put the numbers in order.